Hello everyone, Glass Off Dead coming to you from the end of the video. I had a few questions and I always forget to ask them when I actually do the real introduction. So, I want to know my orc list. I'm considering going to Warhammer World. Orcs are a potential on the table, so are Thousand Sons. I talk about Thousand Sons at the end of the video, but as an orc list, do you think this is the right one to go with? Or do you think I'm missing a trick? Genuinely, please let me know. I'm very curious. Uh, and obviously, all of the missions at Warhammer World will be Arena, so I'm only thinking about Arena and a 20-man roster. Secondly, what do you think about this format? I've tried to mix up the long form, playing it out uh, the, the whole way uh, with... So this time, I'm cutting it up uh, into really speedy bits. Then, when I've decided naturally to say something, I slow it down so I can make my point. Then I go back to you guys, uh, to speeding it up. What do you think about this format? Is it working for you? Is it not? Anyway, let's go into the real video. Hope you all enjoy. Drop a comment, drop a like, drop a subscribe. All of that good stuff genuinely really helps the channel. And please answer those questions. Great. Hello everybody, Glass Half Dead here. And today we are doing a battle report. I'm going to try a slightly new format. I'm going to start with some stills, the mission, the teams, then I'm going to go through, you're going to see the entire game play out, however I'm going to speed up the entire thing, so that it should only take a few minutes, uh, but I'm going to stop uh, and, and talk in live, here, me, um, when there's something interesting happening and I'm just at the start of each turn I'm just going to very quickly say my thoughts why I did certain things why I didn't see how it goes okay so we're doing secure the delivery sites um brilliantly my face here uh, is covering the VP so it's the standard uh if you you get uh one or more uh you get one VP if you control one or more objective markers 1vp if you control two or more objective markers and 1vp if you control more objective markers than your opponent the secondaries are death from afar engage in all fronts recon sweeps out the field within their ranks and the uh, optional sixth potential arena secondary objective is at the end of the battle round score 1vp if you control the two objective markers closest to the center of the field which are obviously these ones in these little completely closed off rooms okay and apparently we're going straight to uh, the secondaries before we've looked at the teams, which makes perfect sense. So I'm playing an opponent here, uh, so I don't get to know what his secondaries are. However, I, as orcs, yes, orcs, I know that uh, this video is probably titled GK versus orcs. I'm orcs in this one. Yeah, it's weird. Let's move. Let's go with it. Uh, so I picked recon sweep, engage in all fronts, and scout the field. Now. Uh, somewhat foolishly, for some reason, I didn't read Recon Sweep. I thought Recon Sweep was Proximity Alert. So that was a mistake. Um, did I... I'm not sure I... Sc I did actually end up scoring it, so it was fine. But, uh, engage on all fronts. I'll divide the battlefield into four equal rectangles, and if you have a model in each rectangle, you get a VP. Scout the field uh, is if you have a, a model next to three of the board edges, you get a VP. Um, quick little side note after having played the game scout the field didn't work for me at all in this map if we go back to this uh, it could have worked for me if we see uh, these objectives this one here this one here and then presumably also these ones you can I think just about place a model so that you are capturing the objective and within what is it within one inch oh within one inch of a battlefield edge Okay, also quick little notes as it does matter. Uh, we took the battlefield edge to be th the wall, not the actual edge. Needless to say, I didn't score it, so it doesn't actually matter. Okay, and now we get the weirdness of me playing orcs. Yeah, they don't look like orcs. I'm aware. Anyway, so my team are four commandos three boys um a zealot with burner uh and a commando knob and a boss knob plus one gretchen and a gretchen leader 
This guy here, who has a lovely converted shooter with flamer attachment there, uh, and you see power claw, is actually a boss knob uh, with, uh, what is it, what's it actually called? Is it a scorcher burner? No. Scorcher, shooter scorcher? Let's go with that, shooter scorcher. He actually uh, misconverted here, doesn't have the power claw. He has a big chopper. That's going to come up. Uh, and then the commando knob, as you see, does have the power claw and just a pistol. Uh, the burner doesn't have a burner. He has a gun. That's because of things. It will be fixed. As I hadn't nailed my list down once I'd converted all these guys up. Um, now, you see, I have deployed these guys uh, in in the, the room. With the intention of my grot blocking the enemy from charging me. Now, let's... Uh, yep, this is the enemy, the Grey Knights. Lovely grey, so obviously painted. Uh, we've got a leader, a heavy, a combat, and a zealot. Uh, this is a silencer, not a incinerator. The combat has the uh, hammer, which makes perfect sense. And that's just another shot of them. Okay, now as we can see here, um, this is how we deployed. This entrance, or the corridor, sorry, is seven and a half inches. For anybody curious, exactly seven and a half inches. So this charge would need a seven to get in. So, let's see what we do. Alright, so we're not even going to fast forward. He's straight away he's charging with his just a car so his leader is going for a charge uh, into the Gretchen and uh, so I actually ask my opponent are you sure you want to charge my flamers so I score five hits on the uh, overwatch with my burner, not burner, the other thing, the scorcher. So it's strength 5, AP minus 1. But I only actually get two hits. One goes through. And I kill him. So obviously, uh, I kill his leader turn 1. For anybody playing Grey Knights, um, this cent on this map, this central corridor is a trap. Yes. You are an elite team, and yes, you do want to be in the middle of the enemy, just tearing them up. It's not a good idea. Do something else. Uh, so anyway, he's... Uh, I don't know what's happening. Little note here, I decided to open the doors with the boys allowing the commandos to run out. Uh, firstly, they are 6 inch move instead of 5 inch move, so they're faster. Um, and also, uh, obviously once they're actually out running around, they are less likely to be killed because they're minus 1 to hit. Keep them obscured, they, will, they have a much higher chance of surviving than the boys. Now, because of the way the first turn shook up, uh, obviously my Gretchen was there to absorb a charge, to stop him from going nuts. Um, but now the Gretchen is firmly in the way. But this is good because it means I can make a charge and potentially get him into the enemy, soaking up an overwatch fire. However, incinerators are the best flamer in the game. They are not fun to charge. Okay, so minor note here, my Gretchen charged into the incinerator, that was actually an illegal move because I would have had to have charged both of them, because I had to run past one inch of one of the models, which you cannot do. You can never move a model past one inch, uh, or within one inch of an enemy model, so uh, my Gretchen actually ended up dying on that charge.
Now, because my opponent moved up, that means that I'm getting easy charges. Orcs want charges. This is good. Also, minor note, I think I actually completely forget in this game that I can reroll charges. Okay, so right here, I rolled a five. I actually end up one inch out. Or I'm just out of one inch from the enemy. I could have um, re-rolled because orcs have, here we go. But I actually spent a CP to re-roll this. It just got me in, so it's fine. But that was a CP wasted because of a rules error. Now, another slight note. If we were being dicks, my 32 mil base can't actually get past another 32 mil base when you take into account the spikes. I said to my opponent, um, okay, I can't make the charge, I can't physically get through, but he said, nah, do it. So we did. This is just a note on how important placement is in arena. I've come across situations where I've actually ended up with multiple models stuck by doors. I actually need to do a video about positioning and on the arena boards. We'll get to that another video. Back to the back room. Little note there, uh, the Grotz, I call them Grotz, they're Gretchens, but they're Grotz really, um, is a leader, I ran him away just in case. Minor notes regarding um, Grey Knight Cybolts. Uh, they actually um, super effective. This particular opponent always destroys me in the psychic phase. Uh, very, very frustrating. However, against two wound models, suddenly Grey Knights are not nearly as scary um, as, as a team to face because they're not killing one model a turn, get almost guaranteed. Uh, the opponent here actually has a laser pointer, which was needed. Uh, this is a super oblique angle, um, and he can just make the shot. Um, would have been really, really difficult to figure that out um, without the laser pointer. I have a laser pointer myself. I'm going to have to remember to pack it to Warhammer World. Now it's kind of refreshing to not be the one playing the Grey Knights in this situation. Uh, certainly over the last week or two I've noticed that Grey Knights are very swingy, it depends a lot on your dice rolls. In this instance, oh, you know, even tactics aside, Grey Knights are really good in combat. He just didn't get the rolls. And unfortunately I got the charges so I got to attack first. And I do have a 2 damage weapon, so yeah. So at the end of turn one, he is down a leader and a specialist. Uh, I think we can all see where this game is going from here, but we're going to stick with it because it's the only game I recorded this week. So, yeah. Little note here is that actually this is one of the very few maps where you can get engaged on all fronts, which is where you have model in each of the four courts of the board on turn one. So it's almost worth doing in its own right just to get that. Now the opponent makes a good move here. He actually uh, falls back, retreats, whatever it's called, out of combat. Uh, with his cyborg and then charges in afterwards with his other model. Good stuff. 
there's actually a rules query here, which is a, a valid query to point out. Uh, so, I was in combat at the beginning of the turn. He, I was then fallen back from, therefore I am no longer in combat. He wants to charge me. Am I allowed to fire Overwatch? Good question. The answer is yes. Um, the answer is yes, because I'm not in combat. Uh, the reason for that is that, of course, uh, if you've been fallen away from in that manner, uh, the only actions you can then take are to move or to shoot, not both. Uh, in this instance, because it, I am still eligible to shoot, I am therefore eligible to fire Overwatch. Pretty unfortunate for him, as it meant I got another kill. So what's happening here is uh, my boss knob is going to make the charge. He has to charge both models because he has to go within one inch of one of the models to get to the next. Uh, but that's fine. Uh, the enemy model, uh, Silencer, is not allowed to shoot Overwatch because he fell back in the turn, therefore he's not eligible to shoot. He's also not allowed to fall back another three inches because he's already moved in that turn. Um, however, there, I rolled a three for the charge. And because I had to roll, uh, because I had to declare a charge against both of them to get past one of them, I technically made the charge. Even though I wasn't able to get to the model that I wanted to charge, it was a it was a legal charge, and I was in range, um, and therefore uh, the here we go rule for orcs only allows you to reroll a failed charge. But I made it just because I didn't get the the charge roll to the model that I wanted. Didn't matter. Now there is a tactic, when you take a mortal wound, uh, 1 CP, uh, and you can actually, um, on a 5 up, ignore the mortal wound. However, this is for the boss knob who is dying. This is his, he's about to die because he'd been taken down to one wound earlier. There is a better tactic, which is when a model is taken out of action on a 4 up, he is not taken out of action. So, the 5 up on a mortal wound is to save a mortal wound um, before they actually die. If they are dying, use the other tactic, which is a 4 up. I made a mistake here, basically. Now, very, very luckily, the 5 up was successful. So, that was good. Uh, so, the, the mistake of not knowing my tactics probably didn't really affect me. But... In future, if your model is being taken out of action, use the 4-up tactic, not the 5-up tactic. Gosh. Now, obviously this has been a rather short game, and uh, pretty unrepresentative. We, after this game, we play, went ahead and played two more games. We actually played this mission again, uh, just because, obviously, this was his first time playing the mission. He didn't really know what to do. Obviously, you see that nice, juicy middle corridor. You think, yeah, I'll make that charge. Why not? Do not make that charge, guys. It's a bad decision. Um, and, yeah, so, basically, he learned a lot of lessons from the complete pounding I gave him in this one. And in the next one, he actually set up all of his guys along the very back board edge, which meant that there was no chance for me to be able to make the charge. I foolishly went for the bait thinking, I don't know what I was thinking, um, and ended up, okay, well, I still won the game, but not thanks to the, the big heavy guys, the zealot, the boss knob, the commando knob that I sent down the middle again, um, because he had left his incinerator, he took an incinerator this time, uh, because of course that's seven and a half inch you're probably going to be within the eight inches to fire overwatch with it so you get some good kills um, so I I was baited into that uh, and he then ripped apart my my actually good combat effective guys so some stuff is going on in the background but I win um, I absolutely dominated on points and on um, 
you know, killing his team. Uh, so, I have actually played a game or two that I haven't put on the channel yet, if I'm going to. I did record, but I, I I'm not sure, um, where I was playing Thousand Suns. Um, and as Thousand Suns, I actually think they are objectively better than Orcs. Purely because, okay, so they're getting two attacks instead of three. But their their weapons are AP minus one, and um, they're six inch move instead of five inch move, and they have five up invulnerable saves. I don't think I made a single armor save um, against this guy because obviously all of his weapons are at least minus one AP, uh, and honestly, that not having a five up save, I know a five up isn't really a great save. But honestly, it really will help. Now, I didn't feel it so much in this game that you've just seen, obviously. I was seeing it much more in um, the following games, where he did just... So, in the next game, he took out my combat units easily. He pushed up. He completely dominated my deployment zone. Um, he was, like, I think he wiped me down to two guys... Luckily, those were two guys that were on objectives. Um, and so I managed to win just on VP by one point. Um, because, he, you know, the dice roll went another way. Um, but yeah, never getting to make a save was really tough, actually. Uh, and even though, you know, I'm Orcs are all about combat... So are Zangors from Thousand Suns, and they get the 5-up save. And actually against these guys, obviously, getting that AP-1 would probably have been pretty damn useful. Okay, so, my takeaway from Orcs was that... Okay, so the other thing to, to note here is if, if you've been following my channel for a while from when I was originally playing Orcs, you might actually see some back reps uh, where I was playing against Grey Knights, and that was this same player. Uh, outside of Arena, playing Orcs, I have never beaten this guy before. Ever. Uh, so this was literally the first time I've beaten him uh, with Orcs. So that's impressive. Uh, now, again, he then went on in the second game to do much, much better, and almost beat me physically, like he took apart my team, dis just dismantled me, like completely, um, because I made the mistake of giving up my combat units down that central aisle, do not do that, never, and it's just a terrible idea, um, let them come to you. Anyway, my general takeaway from Orcs is that I think they're they're good. I do not think they are the best team. I think that Thousand Suns would be doing better. My main thinking for that reason is because if we imagine the, the, the devastatingly scary um, Tyranid Swarm list, or let's say Tau Drone list on this map, uh, because I have no armor save, they would be ripping through me. I mean, okay, I, I have a six up save. But that is half as good as having a, a five up save. And of, uh, that's not that's forgetting that the, uh, the five up save is a five up invulnerable save. Which obviously against Grey Knights would have been absolutely amazing. But let's ignore that. Um, even if we were playing against any other team, just... Honestly, I genuinely think that Zangors are better in every situation compared to Orc Boys. And ultimately, Orc Boys are the mainstay of the Orc Army. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you're taking an Orc Boy. Or, of course, a Commando, but that's the same stats as an Orc Boy, so I'm not. Outside of that, I'm actually pretty happy with the list. Four Commandos, three Orc Boys, Boss Knob with Big Chopper, and... Burner Scorcher, not Burner Scorcher, Shooter Scorcher, it's got a name, I know that, uh, and a uh, Commando Knob, 
with Power Claw. I think that's actually a very good list that can take on pretty much everything. Um, I probably wouldn't take many variations of it. I do have two variations of it, um, but I, I haven't modelled the... Uh, so I actually built the first variation of the list, which is why you see um, my burner didn't actually have uh, a burner. He had a different weapon because I was going to take some big shooters. Um, but I decided not to run that list in the end, valuing the uh, the overwatch of a burner over a big shooter. Um, yeah. Yeah. So there are variations to this list that I might try, but I think that this, for Arena, is possibly the best all-comers list. Cool. Anyway. With that video still running in the background there. Uh, what did you think? What about my orc list? Do you think it was solid? Or do you think I'm missing uh, a trick? And anyway, that's been Glass Half Dead. That sounds weird because I'm Glass Half Dead. This has been Glass Half Dead. Uh, I hope this battle report has been useful for you to see how orcs face up against Grey Knights. It's certainly been interesting for me to be facing the Grey Knights instead of playing the Grey Knights this time. And yeah, uh, Glass Off Dead, logging out, see you soon.